You are watching the IEM Asia Finals, covered by Kelly and Total Biscuit. Alright everyone, we are back to the fourth game of Intel Extreme Masters Asia. This is Kelly and we are on Delta Quadrant with Total Biscuit. Indeed, ladies and gentlemen, you can see right here Lono in the red truck spawning at the northeast end of the map. He is playing Terran versus his opponent, Moonglade, in the purple trunks, playing Zerg, sporting to the northwest of this particular map. So, Kelly, as our analyst, what would you say about these opening spawn positions? Well, once again, it's close position. This probably would not be um, how you want to be caught with a Terran player. As you can see, the natural is right here, and the Terran is spawning just right here, which means he can do, you know, Helion run by really easily. But the thing is, Lonia goes for mostly, you know, marine, marine opening. So we see Moonglade decides to fast expand, which I think maybe this round here want to go for a 14, 14, um, 14 extractor and 14 pool. Yeah, it's a little safer in terms of the actual build, considering how close it is. And it really is very close indeed. It could be absolutely devastating if his expansion is attacked. But it looks like he's going for it anyway. You can tell by the mineral count and the double drone coming out right here for Moonglade. One scout and the other, of course, will be turned into an expansion. That's been seen by Lona. So Lona's response, I imagine, will be the same as it always is, which is maybe that double barracks opening. Well, you have to remember that these two players are really good um, because Glade actually won won the SEA qualifier and Lona won the China and Taiwan qualifier and Lona, I think he did a really convincing 2-0 win against Sen which is from Fnatic, you yeah. know? The fact that you can do a 2-0 against Sen is a big freaking deal, folks. There's no question about that. So it is something that you do need to keep an eye on. But we are seeing the double barracks opening right here from Lona. It has been scouted very early by Moonglade. Moonglade's response, of course, he's going to have to rely pretty much on his drones and hopefully a spine crawler. Spawning pool is on the way, but Marines are already on the field right here for Lona. And they will be, by the looks of it, going straight over there. Yeah, I'm not sure if you would try to do a bunker contain this time, but Lunar is like, okay, you know what? Last round I probably was either overconfident or too careless um, and not being careful enough. This round I'm just gonna go for the opening that I'm most comfortable to with, which is, you know, two Rex opening. Whoa, okay. This is interesting. Pulling an awful lot of drones off the line right there for a bit of patrol. Looking out for that bunker. Going to get a little bit of mining in while he can. He doesn't want to cripple his economy so early on. Spine crawl on the way up. And of course, eight Zerglings being spawned immediately. Oh, SCVs all the way off the line. This is all in situation, ladies okay. and gentlemen. There you go. No question about that. That is a ton of SCVs coming across the map. His economy is pretty much in a bad state as a direct result of that. Pulling all the way off. It's going to be drones versus that spine crawler. It's not even going to get up by the looks of it. It comes the Zerglings from the back. SCVs beating on the spine crawler. Spine crawler might, in fact, get up, but he's crushing the drone count right there. And the... Ah, oh, no. That is just unpleasant. Uh, Zerglings brutalized right there by Lona. Spinecrawler is looking to get up, but it's not even getting it. a couple of shots off before it gets dealt with at this point in time. Well, you have to remember that this is the last round. Lona really has to win this. He decides to pull his SCV back. And his economy is... I mean... Oh my god, his economy is actually even because he has Muse. I almost forgot that he is Terran, but no, that's not a point. The thing is, he tried to do like an all-in push, and if that took down um, the economy, uh, the expansion and the spine crawler of Glade, he would have been able to take down the expansion of Glade, and that would have put him in front. So I wouldn't actually penalize him for that. But no, that certainly was still, not. There's no question that was about still it. A I mean, little bit it was risky. All in. Yeah, that, that was that was certainly impetuous. But the thing is, Lona is actually still ahead in terms of harvesters right now. Because bear in mind that he did kill quite a lot of drones. Moonglade was forced to use those drones to defend, which meant that he threw them away right there, which meant that they weren't mining anything. And Lona now have a, a very, very strong economic advantage. And he's going to take advantage of that by building as many marines and once again look at that that's a massive pull off the line of Lona he's gonna give it a second try this time however Moonglade is more prepared for it he does have 20 zerglings on the field and he's just popped a queen out as well and he does have a spine crawler admittedly it is fairly badly injured well here comes the push but you can see he doesn't have bailing right now so it's gonna be really difficult for him to actually come up against this early marine aggression here comes he, he tries to go for a sarah with the drone and the zerglings Oh, that is a massacre, ladies and gentlemen. The spine crawler is actually staying up and reaping a terrible toll, though. So once again, Lona pushed back. I don't know why he didn't kill that spine crawler. Literally, a, a nanosecond more of aggression would have done it. And now we see a counterattack all the way from Moonglade. And actually, Moonglade 
he's going in there. And you know what? He might even break this line. SCVs are holding it right now, but good positioning. Great defense there by Lona, limiting the angles of attack from Moonglade, but Moonglade is not giving it up. He is a dog with a bone right here. Well, you have to see, if I, you actually look at the income count, Lona is still ahead in income. <laughs> it is equalizing though. It is equalizing because he lost a little bunch of SCVs and that defense was so good. He's droning up right here, getting much more, almost equal now, 18 to 20. So right now, Moonglade has contained his opponent in his base and he's forced Loner to actually bunker up and seal that particular gateway because he knows that he can't let the Zerglings in there. If he does, then it's going to be a massacre. Well, oh, now goes the scouting overlord from Glader. Oh, it doesn't go down. It, it fly. Oh, it fly. nice. <laughs> 23 HP left on that. Doesn't lose it. And that, of course, would have been critical because that would have supply blocked him. And it is a critical time in the game. You do not want a supply block right now. You don't want to have to throw away 100 minerals when you're behind in terms of your economy. Finally, Moonglade pulls ahead now. 23 harvesters to 22. Well, you have to remember that almost every round, he's behind Loner in economy count and he won because he had slightly better decision-making skills and also, you know, he was really aggressive. The reason why Zerg hates this map is because the Natra is so far away um, from the main base, which makes it really, really hard to defend. But, you know, he's going to have speed now and he's going to go for Bailey. He's going to go for his, let me see, second guess. What do you hope, what, what, what units do you actually <coughs> hope to see? Because so far, we are looking at the same units for these four games. Well, yeah, exactly. But to bear in mind, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, is the phrase that I would use. And right now, I have to say that I would call Moonglade being in a commanding position simply as a direct result of that early all-in failing not once but twice by his opponent, Lona. And I think that, honestly, Moonglade's in a position he's comfortable with right now. He's going to have Speedlings up, he's going to have Banelings up, and we've seen how effective he can be with both. Whereas Lona is forced back into his base, which is not something Lona likes to do. He loves to apply the pressure, he loves to get aggressive. There's nothing worse than him just being stuck there, hiding behind a bunker. And finally, we actually see Lona going for the factory, so we could expect to see uh, maybe some Hellions or something a little bit heavier coming up in the not-too-distant future. Well, you have to remember, I mean, it's quite interesting to see how um, they decide to defend because Lona is like, okay, you know what, Zerg is gonna, not going to get into my base unless he gets Mutalis, which by then I'll be ready for him by building an engineering bay and having missile turrets. And you can see the Zerg player, I mean, Glade, actually going for the Go expansion, he's like, okay, I think I'm able to have map controls by having this amount of um, speed links around. I'm going to run them around. So I'm going to go for the Go expansion and try to get ahead in economy because for the past few games, I have taken so much risk in investing in my army but not really in my drone line. So you can have a look at the Harvester's count now. Yeah, Harvester's count, you'll see that Moonglade is way, way ahead and he is feeling pretty good about himself right now. Finally, his economy pulling ahead of Lona in a pretty damn major way. You can see that Lona expands into the back of his base. Very nice, safe place to do it as long as you can take out that selection of debris. And, you know, it is a... a it's not as risky as I would, you know, as I would claim on maybe another map. It's pretty damn good for Moonglade because he has that map control. He feels he can go for the gold and he grabs it. And you can immediately see the difference right there, pulling in a huge amount of minerals and trying to equalize with the mule count of his opponent because yeah hey we're gonna drop we've got two mules down four loner and third one fourth one coming down so that is a lot of minerals coming in at very high speed the question is what is he investing it in he's got siege shanks on the way whereas moonglade mutilisk play and of course the speed upgrade for baneling well, I kind of don't understand why he doesn't want to throw down $300 to actually take the expansion uh, inside his base. I guess it's like, okay, if he does a drop uh, there, it would be really hard for me to de defend. Um, and the thing is, he's, he's kind of going for the most conventional build because he can't really scout right now. So he's going for Muta Bailing against uh, the Terran player, which is, you know, going for the first time that I have seen him uh, going for Mac view, which is he has Siege Tanks. What do you, what do you think about that? Yeah. He's like building... That, that is that's unusual. I've never seen Lona actually do this, but, uh, you know, to me, what that says is that Moonglade's 
amazing defense actually forced his opponent onto the back foot because I don't think Lona really likes to play defensively like this. I haven't seen him play a lot, but from everything that I've seen in this series, Lona loves to get aggressive and he is going for the Marine Siege Tank push, which again is an aggressive strategy, but not at this stage of the game. He is bottled in his base right now with full map control being in favor of the Zerg player. Double engineering bait is down. Missile turrets are... There's only one up really in the mineral line. In comes the harassment from the side right here for Moonglade. Looks to try and get into the mineral line. He can't do that right now though. A lot of Marines available. Massive number 41 in total for Lona. Well, as you can see, he is going for Borrow. We might be seeing Borrow Bailings. I mean, <laughs> that would be really interesting to see um, if he actually does that because then Lona will be start stepping on Minefuse. But you know what? I really like Lona's Markering style. He is, he knows the really, he knows timing and he's like, okay, I need this right now because I need to support my army. Okay, you know what? Um, now I'm going to go for a mass tank. So I'm going to want to go for a third expansion, but I need to find a way to defend it. But you can see, you know, Glade is actually harassing with his Mutalis in the expansion right now. And here comes some, you know, here comes a couple of Marines to defend it. And there's going to be missile turrets back. Glade knows that, you know, he's not going to be able to take down this, take down this mineral line anytime soon. So he's going to use the Mutalis in battles to try to catch the tanks out of positions and use his Speedlings and Banelings to go, um, you know, to go harass the, harass the Marines that, you know, trying to catch him out of position. The most important thing about a Terran player, I guess, would be positioning. Yeah, there's no question, because bear in mind, this army composition is good, but without medevacs, it's very immobile. You're relying an awful lot on a screen of marines backed up by deployed siege tanks. So if you're going to respond to quick harassment, this is not an ideal setup. Let's be totally honest about that. You can stim the marines, so you get a lot of mobility, and you're really great against mutalists, but if you don't have medevac support, then what you're basically doing there, every time you press that stim button, you are doing horrendous damage to your own forces. We see a massive morphing of Bane Banelings from Moonglade coming up right here. He's got 32 Zerglings on the ground, 14 Banelings, 20 Mutalisks. That is a, such a massive number. Unbelievable. This Mutaling mix is going to come in and it could be extremely dangerous. Oh, yeah, there you go. Harassing the front line of Lona and he goes all the way around. Can he take the tanks out? That's the critical thing. Inflicting the damage right here, trying to draw him out of position, doing a good job. He's all the way in the base. He's going to have to force Lona to pull back. And if Lona pulls back, then we know exactly what's coming in at the front right there. That factory is on fire right now. Huge harassment, massive harassment. Factory goes down. Wow. That is, is not good at all. Yeah, because if you look at, if you have a look at the army column, they are pretty much even. But you have to remember that, you know, Muta Bailing versus Marine and Siege Tank, you have to be in good position. And if you look at Lona's map, he actually does not see anything on the map at all. If you look at his point of view, he's playing completely blind. Why do you think he's doing that? Well, I'm surprised he's not using Scan, honestly, but I have to say he's probably desperate to keep up with the Harvester count of Moonglade, which is 73. Uh, this massive amount of Harvesters. He is trying to keep up with that economy, so he's doing nothing but throwing down mule after mule after mule to try and make that happen. But if I am honest right now, Moonglade with that... Uh, Incredible map control. He even took a factory out as well, which is also limiting the number of Thors that could come out. Fall on it into the mineral line. Huge damage right here. Moonglade absolutely slaughtering them. And once again, abusing that lack of mobility. Those Marines are so heavily hurt right now by repeatedly stimming. And there are no medevacs on the field right now to deal with it. Well, as you can see, um, Lono is actually going for plus two upgrade. His plus two upgrades are uh, almost up for his Marines, but you can see that, you know, just with that amount of Mutalis, once a Zerg player reaches a certain amount of Mutalis, it's going to be really hard for the Terran players to defend. Even with Missile Turrets, he can build like, what, three Missile Turrets, but you have to remember that Mutalis has splash damage. So, you know, look the at the tanks. Oh my god. Look the at the tanks. It's unbelievable. Yeah, look at those deployment, and they are so immobile. And right now, those mutilists have reign of the battlefield. They are destroying the economy of Lona. Lona is a full 28 harvesters behind. His economy is in tatters after now three successful harassment attempts from that flight of mutilists. Going in for the side once again. He cares not for your pitiful missile turrets. Look at that. He does a couple of shots is all it takes. So much damage, so much blood. Level one upgrade on the glaive one. He's going backwards and forwards right now because he just has so much control. Thors are coming up, but once again, a mobile army. He has a 200 food army and looking at Lona's army, he only has a 150 food army. He's like 50 army behind. How is he gonna, 
how is he going to be able to defend against Glade? I mean, Glade, you know, decides to push. I don't know why Glade's not pushing. He's probably like, okay, you know what? I'm just going to damage him as much as I can. And if he looks like he's going to choke, I'm going to go for the kill, which he can right now, I would say. Because yeah, Luna, he needs to do it right now. Luna Look at how much money blind. he's got. Look at that. He's playing totally yeah. blind. I, I mean, he I has, think he's he has, nervous. Yeah, absolutely. He has no idea. He has no idea what is coming in. He doesn't even know about those two other bases. You know, there is a phrase, it's like, bitches don't know about my gold mineral expansion. <laughs> in this case, that is absolutely true. Once again, flight and mutalisks, there's 32 freaking mutalisks on the field, folks. That is a huge number. I've never seen so many mutalisks. That mineral, like, he could actually kill the CC. He goes for it. He takes it. Unbelievable. The main base of Lona just got gutted right there, and there's no way that Lona can respond to it. Oh god, and he's going for the hive right now. Lona has to move out. He knows that if he doesn't move out, he's gonna lose it anyway. He's gonna pull everything up. I hope he brings like all his SCV um, to go and try to heal anything. Here comes the scan though. Oh yeah, he sees it. Finally, he knows exactly what's coming. Big flight of Thor missiles straight into the middle of those mutilists. A couple go down. He is now finally starting to get aggressive because he has no other choice. His economy is in tatters right now. His army count is not up to scratch. And in we go for the final encounter, folks. Massive surround right here. Banelings, Banelings, Banelings. Oh, it's good. It's very, very good. So, oh, unbelievable. Huge amount of damage right there to Lona. The food count plus Plummeting right here and still in favor of Moonglade. Moonglade all the way back with all that money straight back. 132 Zerglings currently spawning right here. Needs to defend though. Needs to stop him from taking that down. In come the Mutalists once again. Huge numbers of them. Ah, it's melting. They're melting. There's nothing left. Lona has nothing left. Look at it. Good game, ladies and gentlemen. There you go! Unbelievable play there by Moonglade. Absolutely stunning.